Welcome back to First Take on First Samuel. If you remember, last time we were in chapter 23 and we're moving on to chapter 24. But at the end of chapter 23, David and his men were on the brink of being captured by Saul and his men, King Saul and his men. And right at the last minute, providentially, obviously, God calls Saul away to fight the Philistines who are beginning to skirmish on the borderlands of Israel. And so David escapes Saul's hand. And at the beginning of chapter 24 now, we see that David and his men are once again, by human standards, on the brink, about to be captured by Saul. So much so, in fact, that David and his men are hiding in a cave. And Saul goes into a cave, not thinking that David is in there, but going in looking for some privacy so that he might relieve himself. You couldn't make this stuff up. I mean, it's amazing. And so David is in there with his men, and Saul is in a vulnerable position, and you might naturally think, boy, this is a great opportunity for David to once and for all get Saul out of the picture. God has already promised David the throne. He's already anointed him as the next king of Israel. Maybe this is God's will. Take him out now and claim the throne for your own. In fact, that's what David's men are telling him. David, this is what you need. Come on, he's right here. But David, this is a great example of David caring far more about doing things God's way and waiting for God's timing rather than his own. You see, God put Saul in place. God made Saul king of Israel. And although God has already named David to be the next king, David does not want to take matters into his own hands and make himself king of Israel. He wants to wait for God's timing, for God's timing for him to be king. Now remember, David has been on the run for a while now. He has literally been a breath away from death, a breath away from being captured on several occasions. He must be exhausted. He must be wondering when is his time going to come. And yet, in this moment where he might be attempted to take matters into his own hands, he waits for the Lord. He wants God's timing more than his own. He wants God's will more than his own. And this is what God has for him. This is what God wants for him. And we see David in an amazing way show amazing faith in God and not himself, trusting that God knows better than he does. And so, instead of taking his life, David does do something. He cuts off a piece of Saul's robe, one, probably one of his outer garments that he had taken off in order to do his business. And then when Saul is a safe distance away, David comes out of the cave and gets Saul's attention. In fact, he says, Saul, look it, I could have killed you, but I didn't. And Saul is mortified. Saul realizes that he has been doing David wrong and says so. And David says, yeah, you have done me wrong. But instead of David taking his own vengeance, he says, God is going to avenge me someday. And God is going to make things right. But we see David realizing that that is not his place in this situation. He trusts God more than he trusts himself. And we'll see that God will bless him for this in the future. But that doesn't mean that, God, that David has to trust Saul. No, in fact, at the end of the chapter, what we see happen is we see David goes away to a fortified place while Saul goes somewhere else. He doesn't stick around to wait to see what Saul might do. No, he fortifies himself and he gets ready to defend himself from Saul again, which he will need to do. So how can we relate this to our own lives? Well, you know, so often I think that we want God to put us in places where we feel comfortable. We want God to do things that we feel a desire for. And sometimes God leads us right where our desires are. And that may be exactly what God wants us to do. But sometimes God puts us in uncomfortable situations where we have to trust in Him and be patient and wait for Him to act. Remember, God wants the glory in our lives. 
He doesn't want us to receive the glory. And sometimes that requires us to wait. Sometimes that requires us to be patient. Perhaps even it's a lower position at where you might work. Perhaps it's a lower position, in, even in a ministry position, perhaps at your church. God wants us to wait for His timing. His timing is always the best timing. And sometimes we can even be zealous for the Lord, wanting to do things for Him. But when we push it ahead of God's timing, we get ourselves in the way. We force ourselves in the way sometimes, even sometimes being overzealous for wanting to do the Lord's work. But when we do it for the wrong reasons, it can become about us and not about God. We need to make sure that we are doing even God's work for His glory and not our own so that He can receive the credit and the honor that He is due. So let's take that into perspective as we serve in different ministry capacities, as we even do our jobs, wherever those might be, as we interact with the people around us. Let us be patient and seek the Lord's will and the Lord's timing in our lives. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or if you'd like to inter interact further, you can go to www.jesusdoesn'tgetlost.blogspot.com. Thank you.